Welcome back to the TiVo show. Now, as you may recall, a while back, I drove the Jaguar F-Type Coupe. Today, though, I'm driving another F-Type. This time, it is the convertible version. And even roofless, this is one of the prettiest cars in the world, especially in this very sinister black color. But despite being a drop top, this car differs from the coupe I drove in two very significant ways. Oh my God, is that not one of the most spectacular noises? And pumping out that earth shattering sound through the exhaust is not the V6 that I had in the coupe. This is the supercharged V8R, which produces 550 horsepower and 502 pound feet of torque. And it doesn't just go to the rear wheels either. No, this is the brand new F-Type all wheel drive. Zero to 60, 3.9 seconds top speed 186 so with lack of speed obviously not an issue that leads my questions to the new all-wheel drive system so this all-wheel drive system is what Jaguar calls intuitive meaning that it's only really there when you need it for example when you're first setting off off the line it puts 10% of the power to the front wheels and 90% to the rear but for the rest of the time it's 100% to the rear wheels unless under slippery conditions or you lose it a little bit in the corners, the traction control system determines that power needs to be sent to the front wheels. So essentially it's just there to bail you out if you so need it. As for the handling, this car is already different from the F-Type Coupe because obviously it's a drop top. Now, since this car started out as a convertible though, it's not quite as soft as cars that started out as coupes and were made into convertibles but obviously it's not quite as sharp, not quite as stiff through the bends as the coupe version. Now moving on to the all wheel drive system. In the corners, as I've mentioned, it is 100% rear wheel drive unless the system decides you need it. So through most bends, you don't feel it. But when you do start to slip, when you do start to find that limit, the traction control system does kick in and you can feel it pulling you back into the corners. But it's very intuitive and it still feels like very much like a hairy chested rear wheel drive car and that is exactly what i look for in a v8 sports car moving on from that the steering is absolutely fantastic it's refined it's got very nice weight to a very good feel to it and it's very easy to just sort of throw the car into corners and lets you catch it too with a little bit of opposite lock and as well the throttle response is absolutely fantastic as you get with most supercharged v8s jag have done an incredible job with it just like on the xfrs that i drove a while back as well. And one drawback on this car, as I noticed on the coupe as well, is the extremely stiff suspension. It's even worse in this R version. You can feel every bump, every little bit on the road. And of course it does get better as you go faster, which seems like a pretty reasonable solution in a 550 horsepower car. But it's still, as a day-to-day -day car, it very, you, you'd notice that a lot. But we'll get onto more of that day-to-day -day stuff in a bit because what's really most noticeable about this car, as I mentioned right off the bat, is that amazing soundtrack. You just put your foot down in any gear and it just fulfills all of your oral fantasies. It's absolutely epic to drive. Now while the exhaust note is the stuff of petrol head dreams, and you can partially regulate it with this adaptive exhaust button down here, it still is very much in your face all of the time. And as an everyday car, I can assume that would get a little tiresome after a while. Because even though it's fantastic to have when you're driving on fun roads and out in the countryside and to show off to your friends and passers-by, to have that all the time, to have all that constant noise and the crackles and bangs, which sound fantastic by the way, but to have them all the time would be a little much, I feel, for an everyday car. So that is, that really does beg the important question. How is this like overall to live with? How is this like as a day-to-day? -day? From a day-to-day -day standpoint, I mean, things like the firmness of the suspension, the constant noise from the exhaust, and the fact that it is a drop top 
will inevitably compromise practicality. And speaking of that, one of the most well-known issues with the F-Type convertible is the trunk space, or lack thereof. I mean, this is totally fine if you're only going to be transporting one small to medium bag, and this is without the spare tire. But in fairness, that's not really what this car is all about. And that conveniently brings me on to my next point. So I spoke a bit about this with the F-Type Coupe as well, but this car is absolutely about the love of driving. And they didn't just set out to make a car that was just nice to drive day to day, easy to live with, and is a little bit of fun on roads. And while it is very nice to live with, I mean, especially this eight speed automatic gearbox is very smooth and comfortable and also very sharp when you do a bit of fun driving. But this interior as well, it's an incredibly nice place to be. It's comfortable, everything's easy to find, you know where it is, easy to work with. But it also is very driver focused because the center console wraps you in tight and makes you feel like you are the center of attention. And that's the point of this car is, it is 100% about the love of driving and it's absolutely superb. And while it might be a little unfair to compare it to the coupe, because that was the V6, this is the V8R, that was rear wheel drive, this is all wheel drive. I'd still have this because it exposes you to all the elements. You have all that sky and you can listen to that heavenly soundtrack even clearer. And even though the coupe does look a little better as well in my opinion, this car is just so much more. And of course it has its drawbacks, the suspension, the constant soundtrack, the quite frankly, tiny trunk space. But quite frankly, it is one of my favorite ever cars to drive because of the experience it gives you. Everything from the exterior, the interior, the exhaust, the power, which is absolutely intoxicating. I would never ever get tired of all this exploitable power and all that torque as well. What a machine. So thank you so much for watching. It's been an absolute blast bringing the TiVo show back, doing what I love, reviewing amazing cars. It's absolutely fantastic. And I very much appreciate all your guys' support, your positive comments, your feedback. It all goes a long way and it's helped me a lot so far. So I'm just gonna keep striving to bring you guys bigger, better content over the next little while. And definitely be sure to stay tuned for more news on driving roads, bad tourists, and especially Think You Can Drive too. We're bringing out a lot more content within the next couple of months. You guys are gonna absolutely love us. So you know where to find us, facebook.com slash challengeuniversity, challengeuniversityshow.com, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and at the TiVo Show. So yeah, be sure to stay tuned. We've got a lot of great stuff coming down the pipeline. See you next time. Cheers.